Welcome to our uh, special meeting, and uh, we'll open with a prayer from uh, Nevin Zimmerman, First Presbyterian Church, led by the, and then the pledge, led by General McQueen. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for today, and we thank you for this uh, community, and we know how important uh, that uh, our community is as far as safety and security, and to allow folks to be here in our community and enjoy what we have as well. So be, uh, be with us, protect us, guide us as this commission deliberates on this important topic. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please. Commissioner Rader? Here. Commissioner Street? Here. Commissioner Halligas? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. Mayor Bernicke? Here. You have quorum. <coughs> Thank you. I want to recognize we've got a couple of uh, dignitaries here from the beach today. I uh, saw them earlier. Uh, Mayor Mark Shelton and uh, City Manager Drew Whitman. Thank you for being here today. And uh, Nevin? We yes. Got, uh, Commissioner Griffiths. Yeah, Commissioner Griffiths. Oh, I didn't see Griff. Hey, buddy. Mayor Parker here. Yeah. Is the Sorry. Mayor, mayor Parker is the mayor yeah, Parker is, might I'm be sorry. here. We've got mayor, uh, yes. police chief okay. I, I'm going to get a list next time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the dumb comedian. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, thank you. What what we have today is a special meeting to consider the first reading of an ordinance. So there will be no vote today. But if it's um, the so the recommendation from staff is to receive a report from your chief of police, uh, Mark Smith, and then I'll explain, the, I will explain the ordinance a little bit right now, and then uh, have a first reading. The ordinance, if it is adopted, would be adopted at your next regularly scheduled meeting, and it would be noticed in the newspaper, and your next regularly scheduled meeting is April the 12th and that's at 8 a.m. in the morning, and it would be there to uh, consider adoption. What, what has been sent to you uh, by letter yesterday is called the Late Night Ordinance 3059 for Alcoholic Beverage Establishments. It does three things. The first thing it does is it provides, right now, our ordinance allows for a 4 a.m. closing for establishments that sell alcoholic beverages for consumption on premises or bars. And at 4 a.m. presently, those establishments must be closed. This, that is uniform uh, throughout Bay County, except during the month of March at Panama City Beach, uh, there is a 2 a.m. closing time. This would provide that uh, in the future, that all establishments would close at 2 a.m. during the months of both March and April. So that's across the board. All alcoholic beverage establishments would close at 2 a.m. So that's the first thing it does for the months of March and April only. The other 10 months of the year would remain as a 4 a.m. closing. There is, though, a second part of this proposed ordinance that we're having a first reading on, and that second part would uh, require certain things to be done if an establishment likes to re would like to remain open after 2 a.m. on the other 10 months of the year. So remember, March and April, this proposes they shut at 2 a.m. The other 10 months of the year, there are some requirements that would have to be provided if an alcoholic beverage establishment would like to remain open until four, such as it'd have to have adequate off-street parking, requires criminal background checks of all owners, managers, or other parties with proprietary interest, maintain operational security camera system, um, main participate in the city's no trespassing program, have a certain requirement, minimum required of security personnel that are qualified and um, also that if there are violations of these standards, then the, the 
what's in the ordinance is that their privilege or their right to stay open, I mean, after 2 a.m. could be revoked. And it would be a code enforcement action. It would go to a magistrate. And then uh, there would be a determination whether or not they can retain the ability to stay open after 2 a.m. If there is a determination that they have violated these standards, then they can stay in business. They just can't stay open after 2 a.m. So that's what's before you. Then there's one third thing that's here, and that is um, uh, we have uh, borrowed from the beach a provision that deals with uh, consumption of alcohol in parking lots, in commercial establishments, whether it's a, a, a shopping center or a gas station or whatever, it would prohibit just the congregation and it's uh, lifted entirely from the Panama City Beach Code. We did not have a similar provision. So with those, that's just an overview, Mayor and Commissioners, and uh, that gives you an idea at least what uh, staff is uh, proposing, and then the need to have a special meeting is to be able to have a first reading, so there could be an adoption if you want it on April the 12th, and I know the chief or the manager has a presentation. <coughs> Nevin, can you explain to them that um, we will read the first reading, but it does not mean that we agree with all the terms in the first reading, in case someone's not familiar with how the first okay. and the second reading. Yeah, the first reading is a first reading and there's no vote. Uh, so it doesn't, and it's very broad when you read the title um, <coughs> as far as that goes. Um, and it does not mean that all the city commissioners are going to vote for this or that the final ordinance will look exactly like the one that, is, uh, that was sent out yesterday. But it does mean that if there is a vote and it does pass on April the 12th, that means that the final version is consistent with the title. And uh, for example, the title says um, uh, a late night hours provision, and that's the title, and then I gave you all this detail about what that means, which that can change between now and then. It's, it's, uh, it's the beginning of uh, discussion. So there be no vote today. Okay, I'm gonna bring up our chief. Uh, now, we did have three people that signed up for audience participation. Normally, that's something that's not on the agenda, but I presume that you gentlemen are gonna be talking about this issue. So I will call on you people after uh, the first reading to speak. Okay, there are no other issues to discuss today besides this issue, I presume. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Good morning, Commission. Good morning to the audience and citizens that have come to participate also in this. Um, again, my name is Mark Smith. I'm the Chief of Police for Panama City Police Department. Uh, we're here today to discuss this ordinance as it was just explained. And my job here is to try to bring you some information and some statistical information of what we as the Panama City Police Department have dealt with uh, so far this year and specifically what we dealt with in this past weekend and uh, how we got to where we're at now, maybe this will shed some light to it. Um, over the uh, past couple months, we began receiving some information and intelligence in reference to, as what you see here, uh, businesses beginning to advertise for large uh, groups of folks to come and participate in their nightclubs or their lounges. Uh, if you'll notice on the left, the one over here talks about a spring break takeover. If you look at the one on the right, it talks about an Alabama invasion. Uh, I'm, I'm not here to point out any one club, um, so if their name is up there, I, it's just up there. It's not for me to be trying to point out. But along with that, uh, you know, this intelligence information that we received, this information is still coming forward even now, and we're still seeing it in, even in today's newspaper, where businesses are trying to remove themselves now from the same type of advertising and uh, you know, from the issues that were caused from this weekend. And in looking at some of these, these club vendors as they did this, uh, one of the clubs in particular can hold 296 patrons uh, from their own staff 
They sold 700 free tickets at $150 a ticket. They sold tickets at the door for $200 a ticket. And they sold VIP for 1,000. That particular club, again, can hold 296 people. Mm -hmm. The 296 people also has to count the number of people or employees that are inside the building also. It's not just 296 patrons. It's 296 patrons and employees can be in there. We had to call the fire marshal to this particular club on the Saturday night to help us with the crowd that was there. Uh, this picture here basically represents the outside of the club. We had an estimate on the outside of the club that we were dealing with approximately 600 people in the parking lot that were awaiting to get into the club, which the doormen were saying was at capacity. Upon the arrival of the fire marshal, his estimate to the inside of the club was 900 on a club that was designed to hold 296 patrons, or 296 people. The uh, fire marshal had them exit the club so that he could recount the people back into the club. Uh, the crowd was disruptive, unruly, uh, uncooperative, the business made the decision that they were closed uh, and made that decision also with the statement that they had made enough money for the night. Uh, we, as the Panama City Police Department, were left with the dispersal of this crowd uh, to move them from the parking lot, to move them from the adjacent parking lots, the adjacent city streets, and to maintain the traffic on Highway 98. <clears throat> we were able to do that without arresting anyone from the crowd, without taking any type of use of force against anyone in the crowd, and without the use of any type of chemical agent on the crowd. The parking at the clubs had extended onto adjacent private roads. They were parked on sidewalks. <coughs> in any area of the city that they could find to place a car or to park a car, and in all this that was causing traffic congestion uh, that we also had to address. Highway 98 uh, on the west end of our city became so congested that the traffic came to a stop uh, with the people in the highway. Um, and those folks weren't just trying to cross the road, but were choosing to stop and try to dance and twerk in the roadway. Uh, there was, we also went to each other individual club in the city on that night uh, there was two other clubs that uh, were also, the fire marshal found them to be in violations and he required that they also exit all members of the club, all patrons, and did a recount. In both of those other two situations, the people were cooperative, they were counted back in, and the business was allowed to continue operation with the proper number of people inside those. Uh, at the east side business, um, at the east end of our city limits on that particular club. The traffic problem there was so bad that on Highway 9, or Business Highway 98, that they were parking in the roadway and just leaving their cars. They were dancing on the hood of the cars. Uh, it just became another traffic and safety hazard that we had to deal with as long as, as well as deal with the crowds within the club. It took us on each night, Friday and Saturday night, approximately five hours to uh, gain control of that situation. This slide here represents a neighboring business on the west side to the club. This business is a gas station convenience store that was overrun as they exited the club. Everyone just decided to go here. It was not to purchase items inside the store. It was not to obtain gas for their cars. It was to go here and continue partying in the parking lot of this convenience store. We would estimate between four and 500 cars that were inside this business property, as well as probably 100 people that were inside the business itself. We had to remove the people from the business, and we also had to remove everyone from the parking lot and get that traffic flowing again and so that they could return to business. It required on Friday and Saturday night for us to leave three police officers at this business to main control of this business throughout the night so that they could operate. 
and we could maintain the roadway safety. This pit, these two pictures represent guns, drugs, and money that were seized out of the parking lots of the businesses, of the nightclub businesses. This is from Friday night and Saturday night. Specifically, I believe both of these pictures represent uh, property and evidence that was seized on Saturday night. All of those seizures that you're looking there occurred within probably the first 30 to 45 minutes of my officers arriving on scene and coming into contact with armed individuals in the parking lot of the nightclub that were seeking entry to the nightclub. During the first three months of 2022, this year, we have the six late night establishments accounted for 108 calls for law enforcement service. These numbers, the 108, do not account for us doing building checks, security checks, or making traffic stops, maybe in front of their business or in their parking lot. This is not law enforcement generated calls for service. This is business generated calls for service. 54 of those calls for service were after midnight. 50% of the calls that we've answered to those nightclubs in the last three months were after midnight. 35 of those calls were after 2 a.m. in the morning. On March the 25th and 26th in Panama City, we, as the Panama City Police Department, made 34 arrests and we have seized 11 firearms. All of this is in relation to the clubs and around the area of the clubs. All the firearms came from around the area of the clubs in their parking lots or in the adjacent streets. The total number of police hours spent on March the 25th, 26th, and 27th of this year, this past weekend, was 612.75 hours of law enforcement time spent at a cost of $35,534.78 in payroll expenses. That is not gas, that is not equipment, that is strictly in cost of payroll. And again, the purpose of this presentation and us being here today is to amend chapter three of the city municipal code. What we are really seeking in this is to stay in unison and stay in line with the rest of the county, stay in line with Panama City Beach's ordinance, the county's ordinances, and the other cities within, Panama, or within Bay County. That is what the purpose is of us being here today to discuss this, is to stay as one. Everyone is seeing in the news, the police chiefs and the sheriff, we continually say we are one team. We are united as one. We are going to stay as one. We're not going to let any entity separate us. This is where we have our best strength. This ability to do this with across the county will also provide strength to us as well as the citizens and protect the citizens. And at no point in time to quote Chief Talamentes from Panama City Beach, should we allow profit to be ahead of life and property? Thank you. Thank you. Any three comments? Uh, if there's any, uh, we've got three different gentlemen that want to get up and speak, so we'll go ahead and hear from them now. Have Judd, Judd Manuel. Hey y'all, um, Judd Manuel, 319 College Avenue. Three minutes isn't very long, so I'm gonna go fast. Um, yeah, so in 2014, I opened Mosey's at 425 Grace Avenue. Michael took me out, but then I bought the building, and now I'm almost ready to reopen, and then I'll be in it for the long haul. Um, in case you didn't know, Mosey's is a bar and pizza joint, stays open till 4 a.m. Uh, yesterday, I heard about the new proposal concerning the closing of bars at 2 a.m. during March and April, and I thought, ouch, that's gonna sting. It's a frustrating situation for us because we're a local hangout. We don't advertise or cater to spring breakers. 
We do bring folks from out of town to come visit downtown, attend concerts, art shows, and markets that we host, but we don't do spring break parties. In fact, Mosey's was a nice getaway for folks trying to ditch the spring break crowd, especially for the ones that had to work in it on the beach. Where the 2 a.m. restriction really bothers me is that there's a very large portion of our customers that are in the service industry themselves, and late night is when we get to serve the servers. A lot of the folks in the service industry don't get off till well after midnight, and Mosey's is a great casual hang spot for, uh, for them to unwind and meet up with friends after work for some late night pizza and a uh, cold beer. In addition to the service industry, we get folks from train, the hospital, even law enforcement. Plenty of good people get out and about for social drinks with friends beyond 2 a.m., and sometimes their schedule necessitates that. I always prided myself in never closing early, even if it wasn't busy. I was dead set that we were going to always be there consistently for those folks. Additionally, if I had to close early for March and uh, April, I'd lose 122 hours worth of sales over two months. That adds up quick for the business and for my staff that uh, you know, would lose hourly wages and tips for that period. But then I read the proposed law and my mind was blown. I understood that people were riled up over last weekend's hectic events and this might be a reaction to show the public, hey, you know, we're tough on spring break, we're doing something. But the language of the new law clearly shows an intent to get rid of 4 a.m. bars altogether year round. For me to stay open until four, as my business model has been since 2014, I would have to have a minimum of four security guards, probably five pending what the fire marshal determines about my occupancy next month. That's more security than the total number of staff working in my business late night. So they can sit around and watch Carl from train eat pizza. And possibly the most outrageous part of this is I have to voluntarily give Bay County law enforcement access to live security camera surveillance on the exterior of my building. That's over the top. I rarely have any trouble at my bar anyway. If the commission votes to change the law, I will forfeit 730 hours of potential sales and wages for staff in a year and lose a cherished part of my business. Hiring security guards and allowing law enforcement live video feed of my premise is not an option. I simply cannot believe that in freedom-loving, red-voting, make America great again Bay County, I'm having to stand up here and argue against putting more laws on the books that reduce freedom for private businesses and argue against putting, ah, shoot. I'm having to stand up here and argue against putting more laws on the books that reduce freedom for private businesses and expand powers of surveillance for law enforcement. Uh, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't like it. So Thank I you, sir. appreciate y'all's reconsideration of this. Mike Santiago. How y'all doing? Uh, I'm Mike Santiago. I've been, I've been in Bay County since 2005. You need to give your um, address, please, sir. Name and address. Oh, Mike Santiago, 619 East First Court, Panama City, Florida, in the Cove. Um, I've, been, I've been a resident here since 2005, and I go to all the local bar scenes in the beach and in town. And I notice uh, when I go to different places that have great, great security, they got, they got security cameras everywhere. I go to like Salty Hobo, the Oasis, uh, in town. I go to the beach, about 10 different clubs at the beach. I do uh, a lot of videos for different, different band members. So I, I do a lot of screening for the, with, the, with the videos and all that. Um, a lot of the bartenders I know and the, and the staff, this would really hurt their business because a lot of people, when they want to get off, they want to have a drink. They want when the people working like some bartenders work 12, 13 hour shifts. They start in the morning. So they want to just relax and go somewhere, just relax. When they get off like at 12 or 1 o'clock and they close the ordinance down, they won't have nowhere to go to drink. And uh, I mean, it's not fair for them. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of people get off at 11, 12 o'clock at different establishments, like at Lowe's or at Home Depot, where I used to work at Lowe's. So people want to get off, and they get home, and they shower, and they change, and when they get, when they get to go out, it's usually about 11, 12 o'clock. Most clubs don't really get really busy to about 11 or 12 o'clock. So when you, when, you, when you cut the business off at 12 o'clock, or, or, or I say 2 o'clock, their sales that I notice, that I observe, the clubs really get busy. Certain clubs really don't get busy until after 2. With some places, not all businesses stay open till four. Some certain business, some clubs close at two. 
So that two to four o'clock, some of these businesses, that's where they make their money. Now, I'm not talking about the business owners. I'm talking about the people that are struggling, like the bartenders and the barbacks and the servers that work. They live paycheck by paycheck, especially during this season, a time of year. This is how they make their money. Uh, I know a lot of people that are single parents, and they work, and they work, and they come to get their kids, and then they go back to sleep, and they go back to work again. So I just want to let everybody know about this. Uh, I'm not in the bar business, but I'm, as a citizen and, and as a customer, and I, I'm, a, I'm against this rule, but I understand about the, what happened this weekend was un, un, unbecoming, and uh, we should not promote that kind of stuff, but there should be maybe another system in place to maybe to, con to contradict that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tony Bostic. Good morning, Tony Bostic, 159 North Kimber Avenue. Good morning, Mayor and Commissioners. The events that unfolded in our city and county this past weekend are troubling. 161 arrests, 75 weapons seized. Bay County Sheriff's Office responded to 548 calls for service from the beach zones alone. Of the 161 arrests, the BCSO arrested 77 adults and five juvenile, juveniles, with the majority of these arrests being for illegal firearm charges. And three clubs shut down due to overcapacity in Panama City, with two being allowed to reopen. As a concerned citizen and an, an observer on the ground at two of the three establishments, I, wish, I witnessed law enforcement exercise extreme restraint in not employing chemical agents or arresting individuals who attempted to incite further unrest. I also witnessed unruly individuals push the envelope of what is acceptable and expected of law-abiding citizens. Kudos to our law enforcement team. Now, while our law enforcement team did an outstanding job of de-escalating numerous situations that had the potential to get out of control and did take more than six dozen guns off our streets and out of the hands of individuals who had less than honorable intentions, I believe that a reactive approach, approach to the events of this weekend will be counterproductive. Unless every municipality in Bay County enacts like ordinances, you will only push the unruliness into their cities. Please do not make knee-jerk decisions to appease some in the name of safety and security that will have a ripple effect on businesses and their workers throughout the community. Why not take a proactive, proactive measures? Measures such as requiring out-of-town promoters and promoters of large-scale events to submit their entertainment headliners at a minimum of 60 days prior to the event in order to allow local law enforcement to thoroughly vet each act for prior disorderly conduct incidents related to their shows or enhancing the enforcement of occupancy limitations, or requiring venues to have increased license security, whether private or off-duty law enforcement present at all events, or instituting one-way traffic on alternating streets in and around the venues in order to reduce congestion, or bringing on additional personnel at least 12 hours prior to the event in order to set the tone. All of these things you have within your authority to do. Additionally, if you restrict the sale of alcohol and allow the establishments to remain open, what do you suppose the end game result will be? Think knee jerk decisions and reactions to them. Though I am not advocating for alcohol sales, I only offer that you may inadvertently create an ancillary problem without a well thought out plan, which includes members from the service industry, the community, and law enforcement working in conjunction to craft a truly workable, effective, and lasting plan. Thank you. So, Bishop. <coughs> Hello, Tho Bishop, 8123 South Lagoon Drive. And I want to echo uh, Mr. Bostick's comments, thanking our law enforcement for their incredible actions this past weekend. And I also have tremendous sympathy for you on this board, um, you know, trying to deal with uh, creating a response to everything we saw this past weekend. Um, but I, I think this is the wrong decision. I mean, first and foremost, what we're seeing here is instead of holding Panama City Beach city governments accountable for their failure to provide safety and protection for the citizens of Panama City Beach this past weekend, we're scapegoating an industry here. And while it's clear that there are certain bad actors within this industry that should be held accountable, and perhaps there should be changes to what place can do in shutting down some of these establishments that can't enforce their uh, uh, you know, overhead uh, and, and maintain their clientele, 
What this will do will be dramatically to hurt our service industry, who are already suffering from incredible housing costs and gas prices. And what you're going to do is you're going to deprive them of two extra hours to work. And you're also going to provide workers on the beach the ability to enjoy themselves after, after work themselves. It's a quality of life issue. Our service industry is the bedrock of our economy. There's no county in the state of Florida more dependent on the tourist industry. Let's respect the workers that allow that tourist industry to thrive. And this will only punish them. Problem is, time and time again, we've seen government actions target the service industry in, in order to, to, to you know, scapegoat them and their jobs in order when, when we've had a breakdown of law and order in this, this county. We need to change that. There's another dynamic here um, that I also think the city attorney should consider. This past cycle, uh, Tallahassee passed uh, Bill uh, 620. Now, what that bill will do in particular is it holds local governments accountable for financial burdens caused by new ordinances, correct? And so what you're also opening yourself up to is lawsuits if you pass this rule from all these local establishments that can identify costs from you know, losing their profits, and et cetera, et cetera. And so you're going to be inviting lawsuits that the, city, the citizens of Panama City will be paying for as well, as well as other issues dealing with holding up these, these ordinances and things like that within the, court, within the law itself. Um, so again, you know, that's a, it, this is a very new law. I hope the attorneys have properly taken that into consideration when making these proposals. I hope you will reconsider this. And again, instead of making a broad rule that will damage the service industry and, our, and, and undermine the quality of life of Bay County citizens, um, let's instead look at punishing the bad actors involved. And more importantly, let's, ho make, let's hold public servants that did not do what was necessary this past weekend, let's hold them accountable as well. Thank you very much. Do the first reading. First reading of ordinance number 3059, an ordinance amending chapter 3, alcoholic beverages, establishing a late night hours provision, establishing new hours for the months of March and April, establishing commercial parking provisions, providing that this ordinance shall be codified, providing that all ordinances in conflict be repealed and providing for an immediately effective date. And uh, there is no action to be taken other than that reading, and then it would be on the agenda for April the 12th. Any further comments? Well, I guess we're gonna discuss some things right here so we can all kind of know what's going on. Um, first of all, our chief, you are, are like, I adore you, okay? You're amazing. You have done just an incredible job, and law enforcement at the beach, I think, did an incredible job. Everybody that worked together was, I mean, this is nobody, not even the people in, in this crowd would want public safety to be, a, to, to be what it was this weekend. This was, this was insane. With that said, um, I do, we've, we've sat up here plenty of times over the years and the things that have happened, and ruled in favor of freedom, um, assuming that public safety is first. Um, but everything that happened, these, this, this was, these weren't people who care about rules and who care about when, you know, they, they're not gonna follow the rules. And, you know, I know the beach, most, a lot of their problems was during the day, wasn't even close to 2 a.m. or even 12 a.m. Um, we have a lot of good businesses here that we don't have nuisance with. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm way asleep by, not 30 at night, so it's not really an issue for me. But it's just, it's just I, you know, I feel like if there's a nuisance with a particular club that we're having, then that's a different issue. I guess what my point is, it's, it's a lot of overkill, it's a lot of government overreach for me, but I do think that Mark should have the authority without having to come, right now how it stands is if there was a public safety issue or he could, we could do a state of emergency, but the, the, we've got to get together and all these things. That's, he doesn't have time for that. I would like to see if there's a way to do, an, that we can do an ordinance that puts the city manager and the chief of police to have the authority that if we have a public you know, safety issue here, that they've got the power to shut it down right away. Um, I do think that I'm not against, um, I, you know, Tony, I know you mentioned some things. I, I think we need to think about these things. You know, once we put an ordinance down, it's done. And it's really hard to, to change it. It's hard to, I would, I think we need some more time to 
um, you know, like you were talking about the traffic, if we're going to have traffic issues or maybe submitting, I mean, I don't like to add more rules, but maybe submitting a, a permit for an event that is going to cause a lot of people to come in town that maybe there is some investigation that the police department do. My point is, is I want to support Mark and law enforcement for sure first. That is very, very important. But I think that what the problem is here is that it, it's this a group of people that nobody was ready for that aren't going to care about rules. They were shooting guns, you know, right there, I mean, 15 feet from police officers. I mean, they don't care about if we close at 2 or at 4. So anyway, I think we're trying to, I get it, and I definitely want to support the beach as well, but I think the issue here is making sure Mark has a 1,000% authority to do what he needs to do for public safety in our city. But that's kind of where I feel right now, but I'd left, I definitely want to hear what everybody else has to say, and I just think we might need some time and maybe implementing some of these things that are an issue for, for Mark. So Go ahead, Josh. I've got, I've got some questions. <clears throat> One, um, so right now as it stands, the beach has March, and then we have March and April. Is there, a, is there a reason why we're adding April into that mix? I mean, I understand, I, I think we've had some dialogue about this, um, that there's transition time that's happening at 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. Um, we're not a unified front in that regard. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, there is, there is a, a, lo a logical argument to argue we should. Um, April. I think the beach was going to go to April, weren't you? Well, they're, they're contemplated. They've not yet uh, okay. brought that forward. And, uh, uh, but uh, uh, clearly spring break does go across uh, both March and April. Typically it's a, you know, calendar driven event, but uh, the, uh, uh, the, the whole notion of this was to say, okay, it, it's a minimal impact. Uh, what we're trying to do is balance safety and security with the economics of businesses. We want thriving businesses, but we want responsible thriving businesses. And uh, what we've heard from the chief is that we've had a, uh, a number of calls, over 100 calls that have been to these businesses that uh, throughout the, uh, for the first 90 days of this year, 108 calls of which, um, Half of them take place after two, or excuse me, after midnight, and the other 64% uh, of those after midnight take place at uh, after two o'clock in the morning. Um, what we're striving to do is to ensure that we have the protection of property of the adjacent property owners that are innocent to these, uh, that are neighbors to these uh, club activities. Uh, we we had uh, certainly uh, potential, and, and we can always talk about potential, but uh, we had a we had a a very volatile situation that took place this weekend. And what we're striving to do is to ensure that if a business is going to stay open uh, past two o'clock, that they need to have the burden of responsibility shouldered upon them to ensure that they have the appropriate security measures in place and not punt that responsibility to the police department uh, to have to try to uh, take care of 1,500, 1,200 uh, disgruntled uh, individuals. So my, my question is, and so what I will say is there is an issue. Uh, this is not just a knee-jerk reaction. Um, I feel many of calls <laughs> in St. Andrews, and we, have, we, ha we do have specific issues. It's not everybody. Um, this is a blanket, this is a blanket policy. Um, what is at our disposal, and Nevin, I'd really like you to address, do we have something a tool in the toolbox that allows us to specifically address with the bad actors. And because we did have some bad actors this weekend and that does not need to be tolerated. Well, and I would just, I would say that downtown businesses, first of all, I don't think we've had, we, that's why it's hard to give a blanket ordinance because the downtown businesses have not been a nuisance at all um, that I'm aware of besides homeless issues, which is not their fault. So, um, but so I'm definitely not against like some kind of nuisance, you know, too many calls or too many problems. It's just this is this is really deep. But go ahead, Nevin. You were you were going to answer his question before I interrupted. Uh, there, there. We have state law primarily to rely on. There is a statute. It's eight twenty three point oh five. It talks about public nuisances, and there's a process that you follow. Uh, concerning what the problem is, and it, this deals with the, <coughs> with the place, not the people. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a place that is uh, 
prostitution or drugs or a variety of criminal violations that have occurred depending on the, the, on the offense and, the, and how often it occurs. There's a process for issuing warnings, issuing uh, tickets, issuing an order that abates, that orders an abatement where it would order the property owner, owner to come up with a plan where the nuisance wouldn't continue. Mm -hmm. uh, any final order that's ordered by a magistrate would be one year in length and, uh, and then, then you start over. So, so this I mean, is already in place? Yes, this is a Florida statute, 823.05. So that is a nuisance process that takes, I mean, obviously it takes, there are steps. And How it's much all, time do you think, Evan, that would, so realistically, what would something like that take to address an issue? Well, it, it uh, I know that's hard to say. Yeah. yeah. It, um, it has different. Less than a year, because it says it's good for a year, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be less than a year. Well, here's another statute. It's, uh, this is targeted primarily to drug abuse, 893.138. Uh, eight, and for example, this says that if there's been on more than two occasions within a six month period a violation relating to stolen property, that it could be declared a nuisance. On two or more occasions within a six month period a violation of 499, which I don't see exactly what that is. Uh, if there's been murders there, if there's been aggravated battery, if there's been aggravated assault with deadly weapons, then it could be declared a public nuisance and then the nuisance must be abated, and then you, uh, the city or a county can uh, go through a process to charge them. It's kind of, it's more or less a code enforcement thing. But there's nothing in place today that would allow Mark or the chief to step in and stop Not immediately. So no, immediately. That's well, what I think we need to focus on is giving Mark is and Mark authority to do what they think. They, you know better, you're leading our city in public safety and doing a great job at it. I can't imagine that they need us up here to tell them how to, <laughs> to tell them how to take care of the city. But I do wanna support the beach and I, you know, if, if us staying open till four is gonna be a negative effect on the beach, which I don't see, I look at it like we're worried it'll be a negative effect on us from all the people visiting the beach. So I don't think we're not supporting the beach mm -hmm. if we, so I just, I, I think Nevin made, without meaning to maybe, made a great point that we are, we do, we need to fix something with you. We need to give you all the power you need. But when it comes to nuisances and things, we do have teeth that we can do against the people who everybody keeps calling the bad actors. So if we've got nuisance clubs that are, you know, having all this crime and all that, then they need to follow the rules and there's, there's laws for that. But for everybody else out there that, um, I know it's hard to believe, but I mean, even when Judd was talking about Moses, I mean, is I mean, yeah, you have police officers that are there after hours. I mean, it's not like it's a bunch of, you know, scumbags just because it's between two and four. It could be nurses, it could be other things. So, uh, I know it has not been a nuisance, and I hate to think that, um, you know, that we're punishing everybody trying to, you know, trying to put, you know, government in control of something when it we might just have one club that's an issue or two clubs that are an issue. Um, I would love to talk more with the beach and just see if there's anything like, how can we really support them? Cause this isn't supporting them. This is just trying, worrying about our, you know, worrying about our city, which is what we're supposed to do. But, you know, partnering with them with law enforcement, which we did. And that's probably the best $35,000 we've spent in a long time. That's supporting you. And that's being there for you as well. And I want to be able to do those things. I'm not sure this is the way, the way to get there, but. Well, just to describe what took place for this weekend, cause I live, in St. Andrews, not far from some of the establishments that were here. I, I woke up at 2 a.m. on Saturday mm -hmm. to uh, sheriff helicopters buzzing across St. Andrews. That is not what we want. No. And, um, and if, if private property and business owners cannot control their own private property and businesses, then we do have an obligation that okay. we have to step in and our law enforcement officers should have that, that right to do so. And so, um, it, it is very unfortunate that we're even having to entertain this. Um, this should not be the case. And I, I think there's a lot of lessons um, 
to be learned from what happened this weekend. <coughs> and it is a very serious issue and we're gonna take it seriously. And I would like us to work over this next week, two weeks, to try to either craft this ordinance, craft something, accept, something acceptable, something that we can all come into agreement with um, to give the support that I know um, Chief Smith, <coughs> that our city manager, uh, Mr. McQueen, um, that they need to be able to ensure that what happened this weekend doesn't happen again. So Absolutely. One, just a couple of things uh, and further. Under Chapter 870, the police chief can declare an emergency that's citywide. I mean, they, he has certain authorities that are citywide in the case of a, of mm -hmm. a riot. He even has discretion to uh, have a curfew, and he has the discretion to prohibit all alcohol sales citywide. So th that's mm -hmm. more of a hurricane situation. Yeah, and that's just, also more mm -hmm. of a whole city issue. Right. Yeah. So, and so Panama City Beach is here, and they know this much better than I, and Cole Davis is here, the Panama City Beach attorney. But they are going to be considering uh, a, a first reading, I guess, uh, this week, later this mm -hmm. week, of an ordinance that gives targeted emergency powers to the city manager. Yes. And it targeted yeah. meaning just a portion of the city, not the entire city. And so um, they, they, I have a copy of it. We'll make it available. We were, it was, yeah. thank you, it was given to us yesterday. Um, and so we have that as well, and we'll be looking at that to see how uh, that could, we could shore up our own code. Mm -hmm. Thank and you guys for all your work. That yeah, you've done. and couldn't I we am. take the state law that you're talking about? Can't we take that and apply that to what happened this weekend at particular establishments? And I mean, can that? Could it be blanket for the city? We can start the process, mm -hmm. certainly. I mean, if it happens again, it's probably a public Yeah, I'm talking nuisance. about the ticketing you talked about, that mm -hmm. if you find drugs, weaponry, and then they get a ticket, and that becomes a nuisance property. Mm -hmm. Right, I don't know if the first, it depends on the seriousness of the offense, but it, usually it takes more than one violation to actually become a nuisance. Right, but I'm saying we can continue oh, to keep certainly. the record of those certainly. violations so that, certainly. Every, like Josh said, I, yeah. I like the idea of people being responsible for their private business. And if they can't, then unfortunately, we I it's want the chief to have the power to do yeah. what he needs to do. Mm -hmm. so. Kenny? Yes, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been around a long time. <laughs> this is nothing new. It's been happening years and years and years, but the only thing I'm saying now is getting to the point that where there's more people, there's more activity, everything is growing. And there's have been getting out of proportion over many, many, many years. But like I said, this is nothing new. Some of us have been seeing this just about all our lives, even back when I was in high school. But it wasn't that big, it had escalated. And there was a lot of people coming here. Panama City, we want them here. We were a tourist attraction. But I believe in some of everything that's been said here now that we got to give the chief his agenda to where he can operate it. We got to come out and, and support. If it happened yesterday, the chief can get together and uh, we got to come together and work as one. We can't do this by ourselves. Panama City, anyone that we can get, if we have to go to Chipley and bring somebody in, we're going to have to get together and handle this problem because I can tell you, just in the Glenwood community, it used to happen there all the time. But it's keeping getting bigger. It's getting larger. And it's getting way out of proportion. Only if we come together and work as one. Don't put no boundaries on the beach activities. The county. That's the only way we're going to combat this situation. Chief. I'd like to first personally thank everybody that's here this morning that cares in our, about our community. And I know you care about the safety of our community. You wouldn't be here. Uh, I mean, everybody's got a different feelings, different opinions. 
And you know, this thing happened fast. To us it did, you know. But obviously there's a lot of people that saw this poster that it wasn't fast. They had plans, you know. I don't know who promoted it. I'm in the, I've been in the, the music business my entire life. I can't relate to this kind of stuff. But, so somebody had to promote it. Somebody had to sign the contract and paid these people to come or whatever. Uh, and selling 750 tickets uh, in a venue that seats 296, that's appalling, that's crazy. I mean, I can't even believe they did that. You know, and I think everybody here has to agree with that. Chief, man, I wanna thank you, buddy. You came across great and you did a tremendous job. And the chief of the police with the beach, fantastic. And our sheriff, Tommy Ford, fantastic. Y'all handled it the best, you, you did fantastic. I can't imagine, I can't imagine being in the line of fire like you were. And I've said my entire life, when you say goodbye to your wife in the morning, you don't know, you don't know at the end of the day if you're gonna see him again. And city manager, Mr. Wickham, you were an officer for your entire life. You know what it's like. I don't have the answer. It's a shame that a few bad apples ruin it for everybody else. I'll say that. I could, I could, say, I could simply say that <clears throat> Something has to be put in place. Safety has to be our number one priority. You know, these were not spring breakers. These were not your typical, we know that, okay? These were, and I don't like to use the word thugs, but that's what I've been hearing, you know, whatever you want to call them, refer to them as, that's what, that's what it was. That's what invaded our community, our county, our city, Panama City Beach, everywhere. And nobody wants that. Nobody needs that. Whether or not this is the right exact ordinance, I don't know. And that's why we have a first reading. That's why we discuss. And that's why we need to have open dialogue to figure this out together. You folks are important to us. All we do is set policy. That's all we do. We're not in the line of fire like these gentlemen are wearing uniforms. Mayor, I think you made a tremendous comment on television. Uh, when, uh, when you said, you know, what we don't want is someone that's hammered at two o'clock in the morning to come across the bridge, you know. I mean, first of all, you know, they're driving drunk unless they've got a, an assigned driver, you know, with them. Uh, so we don't want that either. I don't think anybody here wants that. So we have to figure out something that can be uniform, I believe, that needs to work countywide. I really believe that. And I don't know what the beach is proposing yet. I've not seen it. And it may still be in the works for all I know. Uh, but I also know April is a time of spring break. There's states such as Kentucky. There's other states that come down in April. Uh, I think Alabama was, wasn't it last week? Wasn't that their big week or the week before? I don't know. But, but this thing specifically says Alabama, sweet home Alabama on there and all that stuff. So I, I don't have the answers from a legal, stamp, legal standpoint, Mr. Zimmer, but I would like to meet with you and, uh, and learn more about this. And uh, I'd like to hear from the mayor what he says. But I can tell you right now, folks, looking at those pictures, uh, it's frightening. It's the club called Vibes. I'll go ahead and say it, V-I-V-E-Z. And when I found out that there's been 44 calls to, uh, is it Sal Salty Hobos, is that the name of it? I've never been inside there. but. That's a lot of calls since January 1. I think it is. To me, it's a lot of calls. Uh, so something has to be done. That's all I have to say. I thank all of you for coming. It's unfortunate that we, uh, you go back and you think about the girls going wild stuff, <laughs> yeah. all the things we had to do, and all we were worried about was yeah. seeing somebody pull their shirt off <laughs> or have a wet T-shirt. <laughs> Those days, yeah. And, you know, this thing, this particular weekend, the beach did all kinds of things to put in place a few years ago to really stave off Hannity getting on TV and talking about what a rotten place we had out there and, and then all the bad things that were going on and they've, and they've uh, done a great job, you know, and uh, to make it family friendly. So, you know, we had this situation this weekend and, and 
I, it's hard for me to understand or believe that the people that set up this concert at this particular venue mm -hmm. didn't know exactly what was going on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. $150, $200, $1,000 for a ticket? Come on. Yeah. Who's paying that? The people that can only live from paycheck to paycheck, like you said earlier? <laughs> Who are you bull skating? Yeah. You're inviting that problem here. And it came. And thank God nobody got killed. God, yes. Somebody got shot in the foot. All right? When we had that situation over there, there was officers from the beach and, and the sheriff's department that came over there to help us at that establishment. And our guys and gals were out there working shoulder to shoulder. And yes, somebody coming over the bridge that's already had a few pops yep. and been working for 13 hours, like you said earlier, they're tired, they're gonna go someplace else. I was young once. <laughs> I had to run the bar for my parents out there at the beach after working all day on two other jobs. All right? But that situation, we have to be in congruency with the rest of the people that are here. Now, there, maybe there's a little tweak in here that has to be done on these ordinances, and, and, and we'll look at it and we'll do that. But you said it, we got to have teeth, real teeth. The fire marshal goes into that place over there and says, what am I going to do? There's seven, 600 people over. And we've got extra, X amount of officers here. And they've all, whether they paid the 200 or the 150, they're going to be pissed <laughs> if they don't get, if they got to leave. And we only got a certain number of people over there dealing with that issue. Okay. I don't want that anymore. No. I don't want having people invite people here that they know is going to be a problem. Not their problem, because they're making a bunch of money. I don't want my citizens getting hurt. I don't want my officers to have to run toward gunfire. Run toward gunfire, like they're in a war. There was one that went up and somebody shot that came down and the bullet hit the windshield at Coconut Creek. There was kids in the back seat and there was glass on the floor and on the seat. I don't know if the news ever found out about that one. Mm. What if that would have come down and hit that kid? Oh my. You know, we have to be tough. I don't care where else somebody else wants to go to do stuff, but it's not gonna be here. And if we have to have, you have to provide security in your particular business, if it's profitable enough to stay open from two to four, part of that expense is going to be taken care of it. I can't have all the rest of the taxpayers of Bay County paying for extra security to be there just in case somebody gets out of hand. There's a certain number of calls that are expected in a business. Nobody's perfect. You're going to have some buffoon that's going to do something once in a while. But if the statistics show that there is more during those time frames, and you're making enough money to do that, to keep it open, then keep it open. If not, don't. And it's hard for me to believe that at the, at the pizza joint over there, you have to have that many security people at a door, uh, at the, that many doors at the restaurant. I think we need to look at that, because that, that, doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that needs to be tweaked. I used to make pizzas for a living. <laughs> yeah, you did. Anyway, this is going to get tweaked. Yeah. We're going to do the right thing, okay? Yeah. We just want to make sure that nobody gets hurt from some buffoons that come from out of town that don't even know how to hold a gun. <laughs> and you know how many of them we picked up? Yeah. It was nuts. That's all I got. Another thing, I didn't realize that, I mean, who can drink in a parking lot? We already, you can drink in a parking lot right now? Well, <laughs> this I did not know that. Not that I'm no, if, trying if, it out. If you've got a covered, <laughs> if you got a, a, a brown paper bag, you know, and then you need to walk out there. But if you've got hundreds of people that just stepped out of a place that are already mad and probably already partially drunk, 
Then they, you know, and you can't have enough officers to control all that. That's why 275 people, you can control that situation. Nobody should have ever let that escalate. That one issue just was just another spillover from the beach. That, that, it's crazy. And everybody but forewarned is forearmed. So we got to do something, whatever it is. Mayor, Anybody else got anything to say? Mayor, I want to add one thing. I echo everything you say. I really do. <clears throat> Thank you for your leadership, buddy. It's a miracle, and I've said this so many, that 20 or 25 people did not get killed. It's a miracle. It is a miracle. It's a miracle. Those are, those weapons, AK-47s, what else? Chief, would you, can you tell us what kind of weapons they were? All kinds. I don't want to put you on the spot. No, I'm talking to the Chief. He, he, AK-47s, AR-15s. AR-15s. Yes, sir. Every caliber you can imagine. That's insane. That's crazy. You know, I got a granddaughter, 16 years old. It ain't gonna be long. There's no telling where she'll be. Grip, you grew up on that beach. Audience so participation, you come forward. Thank come on, be the last person to speak, and then we're gonna close the meeting. You should have signed up. You know about this stuff. You should have. Apologize. I apologize. <laughs> um, Robert Stewart, two six one Everett Avenue. Um, I want to talk about the, uh, the pink elephant in the room, what I want to talk about. Um, the problem, the majority of the problem that came down for spring break was black people. Can we say it together? Black people. There was all kinds of people. It was all kinds of people, but the majority was, was black people. Can we say that, Chief? It was black, black. people. Okay, thank you. There was thank plenty you. of white, too. It was and a lot of white people. I, I drove Uber on the beach for two weeks straight. It was a lot of white people, but the majority of the people that went to jail was black people, right, Chief? Okay. So let's say that, let's just get that out there. And your point? My point being, I'm gonna get to that. <clears throat> the beach's problem, what I see, I've been in the promotion business and DJing business for 15 years. You're trying to put people in a box. Black people don't like being in boxes or chains. You're trying to put people in a box. You took the scooters away, the mopeds, cause they was acting a fool and riding crazy and getting hit by cars and doing crazy stuff. Understandable. You took the sand away. People was getting raped on the sand and all that up. Understandable. You took the concerts away. MTV is gone. BET is gone. Understandable. People was acting food. You're steady taking stuff away. You're putting people in a box. What happens when too many people get in one box? The box is going to explode, right? Okay. So now you got them all in a box. Then you say, hey, you can't party anywhere at the two o'clock. Even smaller box. So what happens now? Oh, we have nowhere to party after two o'clock. Let's take it anywhere. We go to a parking lot, we go to the Waffle House. Where are the majority of the calls? The parking lots, the Waffle Houses. They're not coming from the Panama City Beach clubs. I'm dropping people off and picking people up all night. Nobody said it was a fight. Nobody said anybody got shot. Nobody said there was anybody disruptive. The problems are happening because people don't have anywhere to go. And the answer is close everything down early so people don't have anywhere to go. Wrong. You don't model yourself after failure. The beach is failing. Let's not do what the beach is doing. That's all I gotta say. I wanna say. <laughs> Well, I Is it okay for me to say <laughs> yes? <laughs> we need to have another beer. <laughs> Someone right, so bring in a bar. Listen, uh, it, it, I, I hear what you're saying, brother, okay? I really do. This has nothing to do with race. That's, that's, let's make that clear. I agree with you. We're not going there. I know, I know. But let me tell you, the, the videos that I saw where all the gunshots were being fired was in broad daylight. That was my point of that was time. I mean it was crazy They're right across from Lake Town Wharf behind Pineapple Willies. But yeah. and, and why in the name of God would big walk into Walmart and trash it? We've all seen the movies, the videos. Something has to be done and we don't want it here. We don't want it here and we can't tolerate it here and we gotta find a way, as they used to say in the old days, to nip it in the bud. Sorry. I, All right. I, two I, weeks we've got it. Two weeks we've on. got a. Uh, I have to say something because the beach. I, I actually think they've done a really. I do too. Did jam up job. The last couple of when I lived in Atlanta, people stopped coming to Panama City because of crime. Yeah. 
and you know the problems and <coughs> gang rapes on the beach during daylight and all that. They want to bring their families down here. We want we don't want people breaking the law in any of our cities, but we do welcome tourists and people who follow the law, no matter what color they are, no matter what. But I will say. That's what was so sad to me. I know, Mark, I talked to you about it. It was so sad to me mm -hmm. that this happened because I feel like the beach has come a really long way mm -hmm. in making it feel safe and family-friendly for all people to come and visit. So it's going to be hard to kind of mark it back out of that. But I'm not saying we all do it perfect, but we do our best we can. So anyway, I think they've done a good job. Okay. All right, we got two weeks to tweak, not yeah. twerk. <laughs> Okay, that was fun. <laughs>